Fox Fantasy Sleepers of the Week, brought to you by the Sports Hub. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back for the Week 14 edition of Fox Fantasy Sleepers of the Week, brought to you by the Sports Hub. My name is Corey. He's Lucas. We're the Fox Fantasy Insiders. If you guys have not been here before, I don't know where you guys have been, because it's Week 14 already, and what our show is about is we pick daily fantasy sleepers, and our objective is to just fill those pockets with, with money. And you guys give us all the credit, right, Corey? That's right. That's it. Yeah, we're coming off a pretty good week last week. Well, Lucas is. And uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But before we do that, we want to talk quickly about our sponsor, the Sports Hub. All new menu debuting soon here at the Sports Hub. Come on in and check out all their daily specials. They're open for lunch and dinner all week long. They've got homemade pizza, hand-battered fresh fish on Fridays, and so much more. If you still have any late Christmas shopping to do, come hit up the Hub. Gift cards make a great gift. Or if you're feeling saucy, you can come here and get a custom gift wrap bottle of liquor for your friends or family. Don't forget to check out brunch from 10 to 1 on Saturdays and Sundays. Whatever it is, just make sure you support the Sports Hub because without them, we wouldn't be here bringing you all these big money picks. You going to give me a gift card for Christmas? We'll see about that, Lucas. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to get you something after the week you had last week. So oh, let's, it was a let's, good week. Let's talk about last week. Yeah, it's um, definitely. I'll lead off. We'll say best for last. Sure. Uh, and and the, play the sad Green Day song here. Um, <laughs> what was it? What do they say? It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. Yeah. It's, I it's, hope you had the time of your life. I, I hope you had the time of your life while my hot streak was going, but it's over. Uh, and it ended in spectacular fashion. Not a lot to say about my picks. I was telling Lucas before the show, and as he knows, we kind of exchange picks on Tuesday, and then we um, sort of finalize our picks, usually Wednesday afternoon. Maybe sometimes it goes into Thursday morning. And T.Y. Hilton was somebody I subbed in kind of late. I originally had Antonio Gibson in there. Obviously, I wish I would have kept that. He ended up having a really good game, but I wasn't sure. And so Gibson didn't really fit that sleeper uh, qualification. He was going for, I think, 5,700 on DraftKings. So he was... You know, I think RB15 when the week started in terms of cost. So you could split hairs, call that a sleeper. But I really wanted to go deep. I went with T.Y. Hilton. I went with that Houston T.Y. narrative. And uh, in the most predictable fashion possible, he had the worst game he's ever had against Houston. So go figure. It's odd. Um, then, of course, Juwan Jennings was, you know, betting on a Shanahan depth chart, which he should never do. Uh, I knew that Trent Sherfield was a possibility. He was playing over Ayuk early in the year when Ayuk was in the doghouse. Um, but Juwan Jennings was the guy who came in when Debo went down the prior weeks, so I felt confident with that, and Juwan Jennings barely played. Uh, but at least he did get a catch, so I didn't get a goose egg there. He actually finished uh, one spot over slot of value. That's how deep of a sleeper he was. And Foster uh, Moreau, who also finished uh, four spots over slot of value despite only having one catch for 34 yards. Uh, again, he was just a, a deep sleeper pick. So it, it, in terms of slotted value, it actually wasn't a bad week for me, but you definitely didn't make money if you used any of my picks because... 4.4 being uh, the highest output of any of my picks in a given week is certainly my worst week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it happens, man. But with Foster Moreau, I still like that pick, and he was targeted in the end zone, I think once, maybe twice. So they were going to him, and he just couldn't connect. I mean, it, I'm glad you had a dud week, and I did it, because <laughs> I had it actually a good week for once, and I'm just going to soak in the glory because soak it in. I, I'm happy. I, had some rough weeks in the past, and now I stepped it up finally. But Russell Gage with 26 points, 21 spots over a slot of value. I was I was surprised because he had 12 targets. That's that's pretty insane. Yeah, 130 yards. I'm I'm very happy about that pick. He's wide receiver eight on the week, so you can't go wrong with that. And then Sony Michelle. This was kind of a weird situation here. Daryl Henderson was activated, and then just ended up sitting on the sidelines. I don't think, did he play at all? Nope, he yeah. played a single snap. Did not play, but he was like activated. So Sony Michel got the load with, and he get, ended up with 24.9 points, 29 spots over his slide of value. RB7 on the week, and man, we, I mean, like we said, we would take volume over, over anything. So 24 carries for 121 yards, and he got a touchdown early, so it was overall a smash play. And then, don't worry, Corey, I also had a dud to Sean Jackson. The Raiders, I guess, man. It's just they couldn't, they couldn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, it um, was, uh, that's, a, that's a surprise. The Raiders' offense yeah. we were leaning heavily on because we thought, uh, you know, no Henry Ruggs, no uh, Darren Waller. Yeah. His target's got to go somewhere. <laughs> they didn't go anywhere, yeah, Washington's I guess. usually, like, they give up points right. to the wide receivers. So, I mean, but yeah, one catch. 
one target, 100% on the week though, so not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two, two, what, 2.4 points, so it was an okay week though. But yeah, I'm genuinely happy for you, Lucas. Thank you. It's, uh, I know it's, the last couple of weeks have been hard. Yeah. Um, you've had to watch, you know, and sit, sit on the sidelines while I keep <laughs> gloating every single week and barely fit my head through the door at this point. So this is a good humbling week for me and a good bounce back week for you, so, so very excited for you. I think it was you. even better that Russell Gage was a Falcon, and like finally yeah, he finally, delivered. A Falcon, Falcon delivered for the finally, Insiders. Finally, it's been a long time coming. And then finally, uh, speaking of people who haven't delivered for us in the past, Naheem Hines was our deep sleeper, uh, and you know, 8.6 points. I mean, going for the running back minimum for the price certainly yeah. wasn't going to break your lineup. Certainly wasn't going to win you a million dollars. But uh, if you had Naheem Hines in your lineup, you, you you easily could have still finished in the money and and created some extra budget for yourself because he was. Uh, such a value play. So Naheem Hines, a solid pick. Yeah, definitely. All right, Corey, you want to get into week 14's picks? Let's get into week 14's picks. Let's do it. All right, for the first pick this week, we're going with somebody exciting. It's Taysom Hill, the quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. Or is he a quarterback, tight end, wide receiver, running back? We don't know. Everything. Draft fullback. <laughs> uh, his DraftKings price is 5600 And to me, this is uh, just as, as safe of a sleeper pick as you can have at the quarterback position. He is dealing with a finger injury but I'm not afraid of that because he has had 10 plus rush attempts in four of his five career starts. So he is frequently taking the ball and running with it. Uh, he's averaged 22.2 fantasy points per game in those five career starts. So wow. he just has a super safe floor. The lowest output he has had in a single start in terms of fantasy points is 18 and a half points that came in a game last year. So it's, it's not like he had a 40 point game that's booing his, uh, in, in a five point game, uh, that buoying his average he's just genuinely always finished between 18 and a half points and like 28 points so i think he's a, a really consistent and safe play and he's obviously got a great matchup against uh the struggling new york jets uh, love the matchup i love the fact um don't love that mark ingram's got covid but mark yeah. ingram's gonna probably miss this game so they've only got camara coming back which is uh, going to be great for with the checkdowns and everything. Kamara obviously heavily involved in the passing game. I don't think they're going to try to run too much with Kamara coming off of injuries. So I think they're going to lean pretty heavily on Taysom Hill, and, and I think more so on the ground with that finger injury. Understand there is some risk here. This is the same injury that uh, Russell Wilson was dealing with. And while the reports have been that his mallet finger isn't as bad as Russell Wilson's, it obviously does carry some risk. And, and I can see situations where maybe if it's third and 15 and they got to push the ball to the sticks, maybe they take Taysom Hill out, bring in Trevor Simeon. I've seen no reports saying that that's what's going to happen. That's just me talking freely here. But I don't think it matters with Taysom Hill. The Russian no. production is there. And uh, at, for 5,600, I was really shocked to see that he is um, – was going for 5,600. That's not even in the top 10 at the position for Sunday. And, and I think most analysts agree that he's, he's a top 10 fantasy quarterback whenever he's active and starting. Yeah, I'm confident saying that this is just going to be a smash play. I mean, like you said, he's got the Jets, and it is a finger injury, not a toe injury. And he's got those legs, <laughs> and he right. will get – he can play a half and just get like 100 rushing yards and be totally fine. And he's never – what was the what was the stat? He's 22 – uh, yeah, average 22.2 fantasy yeah, points man. per game and five career starts. His lowest output was 18 and a half. And bonus nugget for you, in a league in which I have to win to get into the playoffs, I am playing against Taysom Hill, one of my lifelong best friends. Shout out Andrew Bougie. He is starting Taysom Hill against me. Uh, Jalen Hurts is on a bye for him. So you just know Taysom Hill is going off. <laughs> Corey. That sucks. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's a, it's a smash play. I like that. That's probably my, one of my favorite picks of, of yours this week. Definitely. All right, Lucas, how about you? Yeah, for my first fantasy sleeper, I'm also going with the quarterback, and I'm selecting Taylor Heineke. The Washington football team have quietly won four games in a row inser and inserted themselves into the NFC wildcard chase, and Heineke has been leading them into battle. WFT takes on the Cowboys at home, and yes, the Dallas defense leads the league in defensive interceptions, but it also ranks 28th in passing yards allowed. Assuming that Dallas gets a lead early, Heineke is going to check down to Gibson. He looked great last week. I assume, I assume he'll get a ton of action this week with McKissick in question. And overall, they're just going to have to keep up with, with Dallas in the pass. The Cowboys also rank 27th in points allowed to quarterbacks, so I'm hoping Heine will finish closer to 20 points. You can scoop him up for 5,500 on DraftKings and 7,100 on FanDuel. Obviously, I like Taysom Hill a lot more, but what do you think about Heineke? No, I like yeah. Heineke. I mean, he's yeah. another guy who has had, um, who uses his legs a lot. He's got yeah. good rushing production. 
And he's been really, really consistent. Uh, he's really only had, I think, one dud in like the last five weeks. Obviously, the matchup is there. Yeah. Um, it's fun to yeah, watch. I, I, I think the game script should be there. This, this makes sense to me. I think it's a great pick. Awesome. What do you got for number two? All right, number two, we are going to Denver. Back to Denver. It's been a while since I've been to Denver. Melvin Gordon, <laughs> his drafting price is 5400 And all the talk last week is about Javante Williams. Oh, he looks Understandably great, so. Javante Williams was an absolute beast. But let's not forget, Melvin Gordon was inactive in that game. Melvin Gordon is expected to return. Understand there is some risk here. We'll certainly post on Twitter if Melvin Gordon ends up not being active. But all signs point to him playing this week. He's had double-digit touches in all 11 games that he's played this year. So the opportunity is going to be there. They're playing a Detroit defense that is 30th in points allowed to opposing running backs. And this is an offense that has had two fantasy relevant running backs all year, regardless of matchup. So playing against Detroit, there's certainly going to be enough opportunity uh, and production there for two running backs to carry value. And Broncos are still in win now mode. So as, as well as Javante Williams played, there is a reason why they've maybe had sort of a 55-45 split favoring Gordon. I think they just trust Gordon more. Um, certainly this is a game where the Broncos have to win to remain in playoff contention. They can't afford to drop a game to Detroit. So they, I think they're going to lean heavily on the thing they do best, and that's run. And they're going to need both their backs to do that. And, you know, game script, again, not only just it being Detroit, but game script should support production for two running backs. Broncos favored by over a touchdown in this game. They should get up. Uh, early and often, and, and when they do that, they will lean very, very heavily on the run. You saw how heavily they um, leaned on the run in a game in which they were trailing against Kansas City. I gotta believe if they get up on Detroit, it's just gonna be run, 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 run. Yeah, yeah. Melvin Gordon's almost always had a touchdown every mm-hmm. every game that he's played. I'm assuming Javante Williams is more expensive than Melvin Gordon on DraftKings. He's the same price in Vandal. What would you, what would you rather go with, Javante yeah, so or Melvin? Yeah, so I'm the DraftKings guy, of course. And if, yeah. if had I saw that. I yeah. would absolutely say I would probably lean towards Javante Williams if Melvin Gordon's active. Obviously, if Melvin Gordon's inactive, jump on J- Javante Williams yeah. uh, all you can. I just I, I don't believe that Broncos coaching staff, Shermer, Fangio, they're all coaching for their jobs. I don't think that one game from Javante yeah. Williams. And yeah. granted, Javante Williams has looked great all year. Oh, he hasn't exciting. been quite as efficient as, uh, Mel- and consistent as Melvin Gordon has been. But I just think they trust Melvin Gordon. And if Melvin Gordon is healthy and active, I think he starts. Uh, and I think he gets the first drive. And they'll probably yeah. do what they've always done, which is sort of alternate drives and maybe give uh, Gordon a little bit of a preference when they get towards the red zone. Uh, and Melvin Gordon gets a little bit more involved in the passing game as well, even though Javante, of course, was heavily involved. So, I mean, if they were the same price, I would probably say ride the hot hand. But it's, it's a lot closer than I yeah. think a lot of people probably think it is. Just depending on what platform you use, look at these prices. If you're on DraftKings, yeah, go with the cheaper value and go with um, Melvin Gordon for sure. The beauty of it is you can't go wrong. It's Detroit, right? Right, yeah, exactly. That's, the, gonna, that's I, a scrumptious part of it. If you guys it. have been watching this show, I picked the running back against Detroit probably like six times. <laughs> it's generally worked out. So. the Jags or yep. the Jets, you know, you go for those weak defenses. Exactly, exactly. Lucas, second pick. Yeah, I'm going with Cleveland Browns receiver Jarvis. Landry, ever since Odell Beckham got shipped to LA, Landry has been the man in Cleveland's passing game. And actually, I think he's been the man even before OBJ left. Landry has averaged a fantasy output in the double digits, and he's had 11 touches for 153 yards and a touchdown over his past two games. Now he gets a divisional battle with Baltimore at home. I mean, sign me up. He's going for 5,400 on DraftKings and 6,400 on FanDuel. I just think after the bye, you know, they're all rested up. Baker looked like crap. (laughs) <laughs> hopefully he hopefully looks a lot better and he gets the ball in Landry's hands. What do you think about this one? Yeah, teams generally come out of the bye looking better. Um, Rested up. What I like bit. about Jarvis Landry is, you know, he's certainly not going to be the guy who's going to get you the smash play, the, yeah. the 12 catches for 200 yards and three touchdowns. It's not going to happen with Jarvis Landry, but he has a very safe floor. Yeah. And seven catches for 60 yards. Is, he wakes up out of bed and does that. So yeah. uh, he gets into the end zone. Suddenly seven catches for 60 yards and a touchdown becomes a really big number in PPR formats. So I like the pick. Awesome. Who you got for last pick? All right. For my last pick, I'm also going wide receiver. I'm going with Nick westbrook Akeen from the Tennessee Titans. His DraftKings price is 4500 uh, he has averaged 12 fantasy points per game in all four games in which A.J. Brown missed and or left early due to injuries. So what, he is the primary beneficiary when A.J. Brown is out, which of course he's going to be this Sunday. Uh, he's averaged seven targets in games in which A.J. Brown and Julio Jones are both missing, which is going to be the case uh, this Sunday as well. 
He has had 100 yards and or a touchdown in each of the last two weeks, so a little bit of a hot hand situation here. And finally, he's got an excellent matchup. Lucas mentioned the Jaguars uh, as one of the teams that we tend to pick on. They're 29th in points allowed to opposing wide receivers. So to me, the targets in this passing game have to go somewhere. They're a low-volume passing game, but still, even in a low-volume passing game in today's NFL, that's 20 to 25 attempts, unless, of course, you're playing in Gale Force wins and you're the Patriots, and it might be three. Yeah. But otherwise, <laughs> you're looking at 20-some attempts uh, through the air, and they got to throw to somebody, and that somebody has generally been Nick Westbrook Akeem. Yeah, I like this pick a lot. They're fresh off the bye, I believe, too. Yep. So Lucas, awesome. For my last pick. pick, yeah, I'm going to the bottom of the barrel. And this is I think this is my favorite pick of the week. I'm going with Charger wide receiver Jalen Guyton. It's an extremely cheap option. He's going for 3400 on DraftKings and 5200 on FanDuel. So he's going super cheap. Yes, I have big interest in Guyton, not just because he popped off last week with 18.9 fantasy points, but also because there's COVID news in the Charger facility. There's a good chance Keenan Allen and Mike Williams will, will be out due to COVID-19. I know Keenan Allen tested positive, but he's, he's vaccinated, so he's got a chance to play, but it's, it's doubtful. And then Mike Williams is a close contact, and then it's five days. He needs to be away for five days or something like that. So it's it's murky situation there. So Guyton overall just needs to step up, and hopefully he does not get COVID either. <laughs> I'm just paying attention to the practice reports and, and the Twitter sphere, but... If the other wide receivers play, Guyton is still a viable deep threat, and I think he will be heavily involved, especially with Herbert as his quarterback. You love to see that strong arm. And the Chargers host a New York squad that might be starting Jake Fromm at quarterback. The opportunities for Guyton to cash in could be endless in this one, and if Allen misses, I really do think Guyton is one of the best sleepers for Week 14. It's exciting. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I totally agree. Um, you know, Lucas sent me that pick. And I, I'd actually, it was funny because he sent me his picks first. And just to peel back the curtain a little bit for what we do yeah. here, generally we send each other our picks. Again, like we said, usually on Tuesday, usually there's some tinkering by Wednesday. And usually I'll send Lucas like a, like a list of deep sleepers unless I feel really, really good about one. And I'll say, what do you think about this list? And then we'll agree on somebody. Uh, and he sent me his picks first, so I didn't get a chance because Jalen Guyton was a guy I was actually looking at as a deep sleeper. And then, of course, the news dropped late Wednesday, even after we had settled yeah. on our picks, yeah. that... Um, Mike Williams was deemed the close contact to Keenan Allen and is in danger of missing the game. So I would, I think Mike Williams is in a better position to play because yeah, he hasn't he actually will. tested positive. He was just a close contact, but he's vaccinated, so he has to stay away from the facility until Saturday. Whereas Keenan Allen, while he's vaccinated, did test positive. And as we've talked about in the past, with, um, I think, a situation with Saquon, Saquon Barkley, there was a situation certainly with Nick Chubb when we gave you Deontay Johnson. When somebody tests positive, even when they're vaccinated, it is incredibly rare, low percentage, that they end up actually suiting up on Sunday and getting those two negative tests. It's only happened a couple of times this season. So I would kind of bank on Keenan Allen being up. Stinks, certainly for me, I've got Keenan Allen in, yeah. in, a, in a league where I need to win to secure a first round bye. Um, so I'm gonna have to look elsewhere uh, for that league. Guyton. But Guyton is definitely <laughs> gonna be involved heavily. Josh Palmer's another name to look out for. So I love the pick and, and it's a smash play even if Mike Williams plays, I think. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, COVID-19 is, is playing a big role in week 14 with, with Ingram and now these Chargers, mm -hmm. and it's, it, it sucks. It sucks, but it's the world we live in, and you just got to be ready to pivot if it, any news reports come out. So Adapt and overcome. Exactly. All right, well, we're going to leave you guys, as always, with our final pick, our deep sleeper. But before we do that, we're going to talk with Sports Hub one more time. And there's a lot to talk about because it's a busy weekend here at the Sports Hub. They've got a Veterans Day fundraiser on Saturday that you should absolutely check out. It's going to be during the Army-Navy game. Uh, they're smoking over 50 pounds of pork, so plenty of food to feed wow. plenty of people. And they've got a boatload of really great giveaways. Uh, and then on Sunday, as always, you know, make the hub your game day destination. Bar opens at 10 a.m., kitchen opens at 11 a.m. They'll have specials going all game day long. Be sure to stop in and register for that Rec Tech Grill. Uh, come root on your fantasy teams here at the Hub. It's a great place to do that. NFL coverage on Fox, as always, begins at 9.30 with our local Packer programming. Terry and the boys take over at 11 a.m. with the Fox NFL Sunday show. Uh, then at noon, we've got a huge division showdown between the Cowboys and the suddenly surging Washington football team. Uh, not for first place, but a big matchup and uh, would bring Washington to within a game against Dallas for first place. So be sure to check out all the action on Fox. Be sure to stop here at the Hub, especially come here on Saturday, support the veterans, uh, come be a part of that fundraiser, and uh, come eat some great smoked pork. Yeah, that sounds good. That's got me sold. <laughs> Might be coming in. Awesome. Uh, Corey, 
Deep sleeper time. Deep. We, have a, we have a pretty interesting pick. I like this yeah. pick a lot. Who do we got? Deep sleeper time. Fun fact. This was one of my original picks before I did my Wednesday yeah. tinkering. Uh, but we're going with Laquan Treadwell. His DraftKings price is 3400 He plays for the Jags. We're picking a Jag. We haven't done that a lot. But this guy has some pedigree, right? And a lot of people forget about this. He's a former first-round pick who just never really got acclimated with the Vikings. But he seems to have maybe found a little bit of a home here in Jacksonville. He's led Jacksonville in receiving yards each of the last two weeks. I don't think people realize that. He's really been involved heavily since Agnew uh, went on IR. Game script here makes a ton of sense to me. Jacksonville is, of course, eight and a half point underdogs against Tennessee, which is a great matchup. Tennessee 31st in points allowed to wide receivers. Trevor Lawrence has struggled recently over the last couple weeks. He's played a lot. They've had a lot of matchups against teams that have good pass rushes, which has really been the root of Lawrence's problems. Tennessee is not that case. Uh, they are going to be a little bit more friendly of an opponent uh, for wide receivers and for Trevor Lawrence. I think Trevor Lawrence has a nice game here, and I think that Laquan, Laquan Treadwell, obviously, based on recent production, is the primary beneficiary of a big game here from Trevor Lawrence. I think it will be a, a decent deep sleeper for sure, and the value is just 3,400 on DraftKings and 5,100 on FanDuel. I feel like you can't go wrong with that. Tennessee, 30, 31st in points allowed to wide receivers. There's, I mean... It's a sneaky pick, yeah, not is. a popular name. A lot of people are going to see like, who that. Who is this guy? <laughs> a lot of people are going to see that when they're looking at DraftKings, they're going to see you know, the 31st. A lot of people just go for the green and then when they pick their yeah, matchups. Yeah. They're going to see 31st against wide receivers. And the first names that are going to pop up are Marvin Jones and um, LaVisca. LaVisca. Yep. And those are great names, don't get me wrong. But when you go a little bit deeper, you go down to Laquan Trail, you see this is a guy who's actually led the team in receiving yards each of the last two weeks, not in aggregate. He's led them both of the last two weeks. And I think there's sneaky potential for a really big game here. He's got the talent. This guy was a first round pick for a reason. Um, I don't know what happened in Minnesota. I'm not gonna pretend to understand that. Yeah. They kind of had a crowded receiving room, but he's obviously getting some things done here and Jacksonville likes what they have because they're going to him often. I feel like the fantasy world will be shocked after the Jags play. And I like that his confidence. Involvement, so. I like that confidence. Cool. All right, well, guys, those are our picks for week 14. Um, you know, hopefully you took advantage of Lucas's picks last week. Hopefully all of our picks hit this week and we can make you guys a lot of money. Um, be sure to follow us on Twitter at FFinsiders2548. Catch out all the action uh, this weekend on Fox. Make sure to stop by the Sports Hub both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, support our sponsor and good luck to you in week 14. Hopefully all your matchups go great in redraft leagues and in DFS because this is a big week for a redraft as well. Playoffs, Playoffs are coming. Where'd the season um, go? It's already it's blanking. It's gone, right? Oh my gosh. So good luck to you and all of your fantasy action. Go get them. Fox Fantasy Sleepers of the Week brought to you by the Sports Hub.